Enough with Embrace Debate. Pointless yelling at each other on ESPN and Fox. Yet very little actual content. It's time for a change. A voice from the fan. For the fan. The most compelling topics in sports. All covered here. This is Corbett's Corner. All right, welcome in. Jam-packed show as I'm back from the Bender in Vegas. Uh, this is Corbett's Corner. We'll have Winging It back after a week off, summer break, right? You know, we're all busy, but we are back with episode, I believe, 33, right? Coming up, uh, that'll be dropping on Thursday. Lots to get to. Uh, we've got the Home Run Derby. We'll get the Stephen A. Smith's uh, highly controversial comments on First Take, which who the fuck is watching First Take anymore? I mean, my God, what a garbage show, but... Uh, a lot of bad stuff to dissect there uh, with Stephen A, who's really getting drugged through the rug of social media for his uh, terrible comments regarding Shohei Otani. Uh, are you watching the All-Star game tonight? We got to break down UFC 264, Poirier McGregor. A lot of thoughts there. Uh, McGregor, he's finished as a fighter, uh, but he's certainly not finished in terms of a business acumen. Uh, he, As soon as he broke his leg, he was sitting on his ass and realized, wait a second, I'm going to start selling the next fight. Uh, I'm going to start chirping at Poirier while he's giving his victory speech to Joe Rogan. And uh, they're going to have a Poirier McGregor four, and he's still going to get his ass beat. And then he'll somehow get a McGregor five versus Poirier. Uh, Khabib just came out and said he thinks Poirier, if they fought another hundred times, will win all a hundred. And I think he's right. Uh, So we'll dissect what was an absolutely fantastic card. I was live in Vegas for it, not at the event. God, I wish I was, I was a star studded event. Um, but we did have a watch party, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, the Bucks, thanks to Scott Foster, they get game or game three, right? So their first game at home in Milwaukee since what the seventies, right? Uh, so Scott Foster, it's now what one and eleven, one and twelve in games that he has officiated that Chris Paul is involved in. Uh, everyone basically was calling. That's why the Bucks were favored and they covered. They won by twenty. Um, so keep an eye on can the Bucks do it. Are you watching that? I mean, geez, again, it's been a rather lackluster NBA finals. It's been blowouts, right? It hasn't even been any late game drama. Um, And then how about the breaking news in Minnesota? Hockey land, Uh, Zach Parisi, Ryan Suter, the 13 year deal from hell and free agency. Uh, They get bought out with four plus years, or maybe it's four years left. They're still getting paid just to not wear a Minnesota wild uniform anymore. Uh, crazy so the local sports station here k fan obviously dissecting that all day we'll touch on it here as well in corbett's corner and it's not a corbett's corner without a little bit of tennis Djokovic, wimbledon cash it uh he is a legend he can go for the calendar grand slam what is that he could win all four majors in the same year that's how dominant he is and he's got a chance to do it with the u.s open coming up in new york Uh, I believe in a month, a couple months around my birthday. Uh, And in the open, how about this? A big week for us golf fans as uh, set your alarms for what is it? Three Eastern. Uh, That's the AM as we've got the open championship uh, gracing us this week. I'll keep an eye on some golfers for you who I like. So let's start with Stephen A and first take. He obviously comes out and says, and here's where I want to get into. I understood what he was trying to get at, but it was still such a piss poor point that, it was just, it was so stupid. So it's not uh, that it is people. Americans are not going to be as attached to Otani because he is not perfect English. That that's a fair statement in terms of accuracy. Uh, some Americans are myopic that way, but that's not, that's not what you should be saying. And that's not what you should be disparaging. He's clearly the face of baseball. It, it was like Stephen A went trying. That's the name of the game. That's why Shannon Sharp is calling Julio Jones live on air. That's why Stephen A is just saying whatever the fuck he wants, trying to go viral. Shaq does this too with the NBA uh, TNT halftime and post game show they do. Um, but again, just how about the worst topic and worst statement to try and go uh, viral for? saying that Otani doesn't, first of all, he does speak rather good English. He not, And I believe he knows Spanish too, on top of Japanese, because he wants to connect with his entire clubhouse. Uh, so it was just such a stupid statement. And what made it worse was Stephen, Hay, Stephen A giving the old, you know, 
uh, FaceTime apology where he's trying, hey, you know, I tried to do this, and then that wasn't good enough. So three hours later, he gives the iPhone Notes apology, and he still somehow made it about himself. I it was it was very bizarre. ESPN's going through some crazy shit right now with Rachel Nichols, Maria Taylor. I believe it's this week where her contract expires. Where is she going to go? Ariel Hawani, they're uh, one of the best MMA reporters out there to UFC. He just eviscerated ESPN, uh, the former employer. Who is what? I mean, they're just show, no one's watching. Highly questionable. Uh, High Noon's not a show anymore. People still watch Around the Horn. I can't. Tim Kalashaw has aged like 50 years in front of her eyes on that show. Uh, ESPN, it's all an infomercial trying to get you to the live sporting event. And ESPN is basically run by Dana White now because the UFC is now king sport for that company. Look at the NBA final ratings. Uh, They're a disaster, and who could blame them? I mean, it's a lackluster matchup in a playoff full of injuries. Um, Stephen A. was on the UFC coverage. What the hell? What are are we going to Steve? Max Kellerman? I mean, I guess he's a boxing guy, but still, it's because these guys get paid such lucrative deals uh, for ESPN that they have to, all right, well, we're just going to have to put you on all our coverage. I'm surprised Stephen A. wasn't on the Euro 2020 final. Um, Again, it's very bizarre. I don't watch ESPN except for the live sporting events. I mean, I'm still getting hosed as they raise us here six to seven dollars per month for ESPN plus I'm a sports junkie. I'm there for the live sports. I'm not there for first take for two hours where all it is, is a question is Conor McGregor done or is he not? And then two guys purposely on their different side. Cause they think it's good entertainment. Uh, it's not. Um, all right. So on the note of Otani, let's get to the home run derby last night. I didn't watch it. I got my brand new driver. I went out and tested that thing, caught the highlights. I mean, the, the shocking thing there was uh, Otani, the one seed, lost to Juan Soto, the eight seed. Now it's not every time Juan Soto is going to be an eight seed, right? He's, he hit the longest home run of the night at Coors Field um, and the home run derby in this new format. We've seen some crazy upsets like that. So Otani um, goes down in round one. The news was uh, right. Pete Alonzo, he repeats his champ back to back for the home run derby. He's just a man, BP monster mashing machine. And I saw the stat, which was crazy that he has made more, winnings in terms of money from the home run derby in the last two years than he has an entire career his career which is what two or three years in MLB because he's under uh, arbitration not even had arbitration yet so it's just ridiculous um but that are you gonna watch the all-star game tonight I mean that's I I, I might check it out I might not baseball has just really struggled to grab me this year probably because the Cardinals have been stinking uh, even here in Minneapolis, uh, the Twins have obviously sucked. I know they won four straight to end the break, but they're still 11 games under 500, like 14 back in the division. Uh, it's been awful. Um, what was cool, and this was this is where baseball gets me. You know, I, I'm not here for the Astros, the cheaters, um, but I was here. I, I mean, they clowned us, right? You got a great series with the Yankees and the Astros, two teams that have beef. And now the Astros are obviously the cheaters that are labeled, but the reason they are is because they were cheating too well. Uh, Everyone cheats in baseball. Did you just see the foreign substance scandal? It was like the entire league on the mound uh, using some sort of substance to try and get their uh, spin rate and velocity up and movement, control their pitches. Um, But of course, there was the moment when the Astros in the disputed year, when they were banging on the trash can, when Altuve is caught on camera saying, don't rip my jersey off. And everyone's saying, wait a second, is it this elaborate that they have buzzers on their goddamn bodies like for fastballs and off speed pitches? So the Yankees all series long kind of making fun of the Astros, right? Hey, Aaron Judge hits a bomb. He goes, yeah, I don't have to wear anything. He's staring in the Astros dugout. The Yankees blow. I was watching this in the sports book in Vegas on Sunday, uh, right before I left. They were up seven to two, and they give up six runs in the bottom of the ninth because Aaron Boone, for God knows what reason, decided to leave Chad Green in. And Altuve goes down and gets a breaking ball and destroys it out to left, walk off three run bomb, comes around the bases. They purposely ripped his shirt off. No buzzers. And Altuve, he's jacked. Uh, Jacked up, he hit the home run, and he's pretty cut. I don't know where – didn't he have a tattoo or something that he was embarrassed to show? Wasn't that his excuse last time? (laughs) 
it's, it's the Astros. I mean, hey, props to them for clowning us that way. I think that was the coolest video of the weekend in baseball. But the weekend belonged to uh, Poirier. Dustin Poirier takes out Connor McGregor. Uh, Connor, he's done. I, I swept the main card. He, uh, you know, he was, he looked all right, but then Poirier was controlling that. And I loved what he said. The, the posting comments were fascinating because McGregor's just blabbing his mouth, you know, yada, yada, this, yada, yada, that. And uh, just going after Poirier's wife, which is just so tasteless. And uh, it, this was before the fight. So again, I'm sure everyone in the world has seen it by now, but Poirier is claiming that he checked one of Connor's leg kicks. And if you watch the fight closely, Connor was crushing Poirier's leg he was going after it there was probably about six or seven I'm going hey dude check something do something about it and I missed the check but he must have got it and this is how some legs break right like Chris Weidman he broke his leg in a disgusting manner so McGregor Poirier says that he felt something crack and that would make sense because McGregor it looked like he wasn't even touched when all of a sudden half his bone is sitting on the mat in front of her eyes and his leg is dangling like a flank steak behind him um disgusting and then he's just lying down as Joe Rogan gets down next to him just one of the most bizarre post game interviews ever but he's that dude knows how to make money i don't like McGregor but shit him walking into the arena gives me chills i buy his fights uh, he is a showman, but I also like getting to see somebody knock his shit out. And I think that's what he's destined for, but Hey, he's still making more money than all of us. Right. Um, so how about this sugar Sean O'Malley? This might've been, <laughs> this was the craziest fight I think I've ever seen. Sugar Sean O'Malley is like a one to 10 favorite. He's about to destroy this guy. They're both, it was the battle of purple hair versus uh, green hair. Sugar Sean O'Malley, a pretty fire dude, I do have to say. Kind of had like the cornrow dreads with the purple. Um, Sugar Sean O'Malley, and hey, glasses alert because I've got some stats. I don't even know what, I think it was Marino, this other guy's name, but I call him the Iron Chin. Why? Because he took 230 like jabs, strikes to the face and didn't blink. It was, I mean, Sugar Sean O'Malley was almost like he ke- he clearly won the fight going away because he, he almost broke the record for the most strikes ever. He is just g- getting through every single punch right to the fucking face. And this guy is still advancing towards him. It was the, it was something out of a nightmare. I couldn't believe it. Uh, this dude, Marino, has gained a lot of fans just by taking 230 punches to the face. It was ridiculous. It was hard to watch. And then Herb Dean, the honorable Herb Dean, he ends up stopping the fight because he couldn't fathom how he was going to take another punch to the face without keeling over. Uh, it was one of the worst stoppages we've ever seen. My God, there was 22 seconds left in the fight. And it's like, hey, if this dude taking this many, he's still moving towards the other guy. Maybe just let it go to the bell. Uh, that was absolutely crazy. And then lastly, this was the funnest fight for me because Greg Hardy is the worst fighter of all time. Uh, they, they are just, he's seven and four now as a professional fighter after he got ran out of the NFL, <laughs> excuse me, for being a D-bag domestic assault person right convict allegedly i guess but bad dude and he's not good in the ufc so it was fucking awesome to see tai tui Basa knock him out in less than two minutes i mean that was awesome and that was the easiest lock of the night hardy is so bad how the hell if he gets another pay-per-view fight that is just ridiculous i mean it is just terrible to see him on the card just wailing around he's wailing around he's not a fighter Okay, yeah, so that was the fight I enjoyed the most was I literally went to the bathroom at B-Dubs in Vegas and I came out and that was right as tu- uh, Tui Vasa just clubs him, uppercut, gets hardy, and I, I just see my table and we're all on t- tie and Tui, we're just going crazy. We're just it, it, elation. I tell you, one of the best things ever is just g- going to a UFC. I want to go in person, um, but even a watch party, just getting with your buddies, that's one of the funnest parts to watch and bet on. Um, I think I had something else there, but it slipped my mind. So let's move to the Bucks here. Uh, mentioned Scott Foster again. The only thing I had here is game four. What do you got? Are the Bucks at home going to send a two two? If this game, if this series gets to a game seven, of course I'm there. But uh, you know, I, I'll catch the highlights until there. Um, 
who do you want to who do you want to win it more? Devin Booker has not been that great at this finals, right? I, I mean, he he has been shooting poorly lately. So that and Giannis, who you know, it looked like he tore an ACL. Now all of a sudden he's going out with back to back forty point double doubles. Um, he's heating up. Booker's starting to cool off. That might be a little worrisome for some Suns backers. So that is something to keep an eye on. All star game for baseball will uh, take the crown tonight, and then it'll be standalone. NBA Finals Game 4 coming up tomorrow night. Um, I heard this the funniest thing ever from the Levitard show, uh, which is obviously one of my favorites. But the, the what, as if the NBA sideline report is just bad enough. Again, we we're talking about how ESPN just kind of slings crap in your face and tells you to enjoy it with their shows, their programming. The, the sideline, who the hell, the coaches don't want to do it. We don't want to, hey, coach, what did you uh, see there in that first quarter? Well, you know, the same shit we see every fucking night. Um, so that's ridiculous, but I think there might be the worst thing that we do is wired for sound. The players don't want to be wired up. You can't swear. You feel like you're being taped and you're the only quotes we're able to air on are just cheesy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Good job. That's all the wire for sound is. You think the, would you be okay if we didn't get to hear an extra cheer from, you know, Deandre Hayton, uh, on the sideline, uh, just a completely, completely meager. Yeah, go, go team. Uh, yeah, the wired for sound. Uh, that's why the NBA. Pro, I'll catch if it's a twenty point game again. I'll see the highlights. Um, the wired for sound isn't going to get me, or unless it's a game seven. So the breaking news in Minnesota country for the Wild. And again, we're going back to the glasses here. Glasses alert because I did some digging. Um, this is crazy. It's almost like poor leadership in many uh, Minneapolis sports is contagious. It, there must be something in the water. You got the Timberwolves. Oof. Uh, the Wild. I mean, a, a lot of playoff appearances. Vikings, of course, have been uh, been there, but they've had the heartbreak. Um, and again, you know, it's it's just. But he, here were two of the craziest contracts you've ever seen. So Zach Parisi, Ryan Suter, bought out with four years left. They both signed 13-year deals, $98 million. First of all, a 13-year deal? What is this, baseball? I, I didn't think this was possible in hockey until I moved here, and I was like, wait a second. what?" And you could see it play out as Parisi is not playing towards the end of the season. It was a real tension in this locker room because – so this was the work, 13-year deal, $98 million for each of them. Who get, like You signed two people for the same exact deal? It's crazy. So they went all in back in 2012, and this guy – Chuck Fletcher, he's at the helm. 2019, uh, excuse me, 2009, signs them in 2012, and they just can't get it done. They can't get the pass the second round. He's out by 2018, new regime in. They're looking at the books for the next six, seven years, and they're going, what the hell did this guy do? Um, so they buy him out. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you, a lot of Wild fans are going to tell you, oh, Parisi, legend, legend. Eh. I'm going to give it an unbiased opinion from looking out. You sign him 13 years, 98 mil. You buy him out after he's still got four years left. Like, something crazy left. The Wild never made it past the second round. I think they only got to the second round once. Um, they, they made the playoffs consistently, but just fell short there. Zach Parisi scored 30 goals only once in his nine-year career with the Minnesota Wild in a season. He did five times in seven years prior with his first team, the New Jersey Devils. Bad contract. Didn't live up to it. Hero? Wild hero? Eh, you guys need some better ownership group and get some more heroes in there. Uh, let's talk tennis. Speaking of real heroes, Novak Djokovic ties Nadal, Federer, 20th Grand Slam title. Berrettini takes the first set. Ber Matteo Berrettini, what, almost a crazy day for Italy, right? They take the 2020 Euro. Uh, Berrettini takes the first set in a tiebreaker against Djokovic. I was asleep for that set, and I woke up in time to see Djokovic absolutely cruise three straight sets to the Wimbledon title on the grass. Uh, chills. Djokovic, he's, he's unbelievable, and tennis is just such a fun sport to watch. Is he going to go for the career grand, uh, excuse me, calendar grand slam? With the U.S. Open, I say, why not? Federer, he's banged up. I know he made it a little bit of a run in Wimbledon, um, but he lost early. 
I think he got to the quarterfinals and he was out of there as a favorite. He just pulled out of the Olympics. He's clearly banged up. Uh, age takes your toll on the body. Nadal skipped Wimbledon, uh, I believe, to prepare for the Olympics and then the U.S. Open. What's his health? He just lost to Djokovic in the final in the French Open, his tournament. I, I gotta look. I wish I looked this up before I hit record, but I gotta think Djokovic is a lock for the U.S. Open. Um, he is just on another planet right now, uh, and that is coming up in uh, beginning of September, end of August. Uh, coming up this week, it is the Open Championship. John Rahm is an odds-on favorite. He took the U.S. Open right in dramatic fashion. Uh, he's the number one golfer on the planet right now. DJ was kind of this unconsciously hot uh, last year. Now it's Rahm's year, this new calendar year. Um, keep an eye on John Rahm. Uh, he's never won it before. I think 7 plus 750 is obviously going to get you. He's not going to not be in the chase in the final day. At least I would hope so. Spieth, a former champion playing great golf as he may or may not be back. Spieth may or may not be back. I think he has got some ripe odds for maybe a chance uh, at it. Uh, what it, so is it even on Sunday? It's got to be early morning Sunday, right? But uh, Louis Oosthuizen, former champ, he's always been in these majors, but then he's had some terrible shots in these final rounds. Is he going to be able to get back in the winner's circle? And then the last guy, uh, Tyrrell Hatton, and then also Rory, a former champ, keep an eye on him. Tyrrell Hatton, I always think he's, again, he's one of these guys like Louie that shows up for these big tournaments, uh, the Open Championship. I'm going to be locked into that all this week. Hope you're locked into Corbett's Corner. I'm Dylan Corbett. We'll get winging it back with the crew coming up. That'll drop on Thursday. Uh, so enjoy some clips from this. Uh, enjoy the NBA Finals, the All-Star Game tonight, and the Open Championship this week. We'll talk to you later here on the Dylan Corbett Podcast Network.